everyone. Uh, welcome back to today's lecture, lecture number 18. Uh, and in this lecture, we will continue uh, in the molecular adsorbates uh, part, which we have been already discussing in the last uh, two classes. And today, we want to again look back into the factors that control the molecular add layer formation, because we have seen it is a little more complex um, than the atomic adsorbate and then we will try to basically understand it completely today and uh, um, we will try to see um, how we can really understand the add layer formation of molecular adsorbates. Um, just recollecting what we have done in the last class, if you remember, we have been mainly focusing on the molecular, molecular interaction. Um, as we have already seen, that is one of the major part that controls the final add layer formation or the final assembly of the molecule itself, mm, mainly controlled by the molecule-molecule interaction and the molecule-surface interaction. So, I just want to recollect what we have uh, done in the, in the last class. So, you remember that we have been looking at molecules of um, a, a shape like this uh, and then we said depending on the way they interact uh, and mainly due to the difference in the possible orientation, it is expected that molecular add layer can have more possible um, type of uh, patterns or assembly than you would expect it for like a simple atom like adsorbates. And then we also said that the, if you would look at the type of um, potential energy diagram of the molecular adsorbates, it would look more or less like this, uh, where the interatomic distance and the uh, energy, the potential energy of the, or the so-called formation energy of the molecular adsorbate, if you put together, you would find that there are several minimas, yeah. Uh, in the previous class, we have already just discussed about that and there may be like one uh, uh, global minimum, so that is something like an absolute most stable thermodynamically favorable project uh, product, but in between you can actually have like additional um, uh, uh, additional local minimas, which is also a possible type of um, uh, add layer assembly that you can expect. So, that is a difference uh, uh, for this molecular adsorbates con compared to atom like adsorbates and the main reason is actually due to the fact that there is molecule molecule uh, orientation is also playing a role and not just the molecular molecular distance. Therefore, what we want to make a small correction to what we have done in the previous class is that we want to basically change now the coordinate of this so called potential energy diagram to something which you can call it as Q, which is like a collective coordinate that includes not just one parameter that includes several parameters. What is this? You already see in this particular case, the, the most important thing that controls the assembly of molecule is in fact the distance between the molecules that would be something which we can call it as the D, the distance between the molecule and also the relative orientation of the molecule. If I would just draw a line um, along the molecular lattice, then you can see that the molecules are oriented with a certain angle, um, let us call it theta, uh, between the, the molecular lattice and the orientation of the molecule. So, on surface, since all other uh, type of orientations for a planar molecule uh, in, in, in a simpler case is restricted, we can typically talk about orientations with a respect to the plane of the surface. And if that is the case, then you already see that the Q should contain D and theta, yeah. So, Q is actually a function of D and theta, yeah. And then we can somewhat say that the potential energy diagram or the potential energy surface for the uh, molecule molecule interaction is not just one dimensional, it is basically a multi dimensional uh, space. Um, but however, uh, we can basically depict them using something like that, where we would still call this quantity to be something like delta E intra, yeah. So, that is the same or that is actually comparable to what we have done for the atom like adsorbate. So, that is good. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a, an example of a real system and how 
the so-called molecular orientation and the molecule molecule distance is basically related and how the so-called molecule molecule interaction is coming into the picture or in terms of the interaction energy yeah so now you take again this molecule uh, the thylacinin molecule uh, it's a very nice and model system in fact and and thylacinin also has been used in many uh, uh, thin film based application because it's a semiconducting molecule so that has been widely used um, in in thin film uh, transistors and also in organic light emitting diodes and these kind of um, materials or application it is already used so it's a, a, a kind of very celebrated semiconducting molecule that is now uh, around in the application so now when you look at this molecule of course the thanks to the planarity of the molecule so we do not need to to consider more complex uh, uh, orientations uh, uh, in this case everything is going to happen on the surface that means a molecular orientation with respect to the surface so if this would be the surface plane the molecular orientation with respect to the surface is something that we are going to mainly consider and the other things are not quite important in this case now i am defining something called an azimuthal orientation or an azimuthal angle that is actually the orientation of the molecular axis with respect to the uh, lattice so if imagine that the molecule is forming like this as you see in the image so that means molecules are forming um, the patterns are coming like that and then between the lattice between the molecular lattice and the molecular lattice is somewhat like this and the molecular orientation you see there is actually an angle that is something i'm calling it as azimuthal angle yeah so that angle is something that we are now going to to use in understanding the molecule molecule interaction so now for this particular case this particular orientation the azimuthal angle is zero yeah where the two molecules are basically facing with respect to each other so of course the choice of numbers or choice where you start is quite arbitrary uh, but at the end of the day you would basically just define an angle and you can basically play with that to understand so that's the point so here we define that this azimuthal orientation in this particular case to be zero now what i can do is i can take one molecule and rotate one molecule with respect to the other and if i do that i will get enormous possible orientations between the molecules so that means i can span the azimuthal angle from theta till uh, 360 degree it's possible but the point is since the molecule is a c4 symmetric or it's a four fold symmetric molecule of course the the symmetry group of the molecule is d4h that's something uh, unimportant in this case but it is of course a c4 symmetric molecule so everything between 0 and 90 degree is what is interesting and everything between 0 and 90 degree is basically symmetrical with respect to to the orientation and one need to only consider therefore like um, uh, from 0 to 45 degree for understanding the entire picture everything else is symmetric otherwise yeah so now what i'm doing is i'm basically just or uh, rotating the molecule with respect to each other and then i'm coming to another orientation which is actually having an azimuthal angle of 30 degree now when it come to the 30 degree is something interesting in this particular case because as i have told you in the 30 degree orientation as you can see here the intermolecular interaction is more effective because the the area that the two molecule basically just cover is the maximum in that case because these molecules are typically interacting through van der waals interaction and therefore it is quite important that they share a large uh, boundary between them yeah and that is the much most effective in this orientation around 30 degree where you get the best um, uh, overlap between the molecule and in addition there is also a weak interaction which is not uh, necessarily something that is uh, um, uh, predicted as a hydrogen bonding or something but you can see there is still a nitrogen which is interacting with the aromatic um, hydrogen ch hydrogen for example yeah that's a very very weak interaction it is not necessarily classified as a hydrogen bonding or something like that but it is uh, observed in this kind of molecule that finally the molecule is actually arranging in such a way that the hydrogen is pointing towards the nitrogen of course it is a weak interaction but at the same time there is also this so called large overlap between the molecule due to the orientation so now you see clearly 
that with respect to the relative orientation of the molecule, you can clearly see how the, the, the interactions are going to occur. So, that is what I want to, to now put it in some plot, which is known as the intermolecular distance, that is the distance between the two centers of the two atoms. Yeah? And, and this is actually a theoretical calculation. What you are seeing here is a theoretical calculation, uh, which is performed by taking two molecules and rotating them with respect to each other and then calculating the so-called uh, potential energy. And then you actually just subtract the potential energy um, that you gain from this so-called orientation with respect to a single molecule and then you get something known as an interaction energy. Yeah? That will tell you roughly how stable these orientations are uh, when they form a dimer. Yeah? So, that is the idea. Now, you can see for sure in the azimuthal orientation 0 degree, the distance between the molecule is about 16.52 angstroms, yeah? the distance between the molecule. That is the most favorable distance. So, that means that along every orientation, you can basically draw a potential energy uh, curve of this form. Yeah? So, it will basically look like that along every single orientation. So, at uh, theta is equal to 0. Yeah, uh, theta is equal to 0 and also you can basically just do the same thing for uh, theta is equal to 1 degree, 2 degree like that and then you basically put those plots together and then you get this so called uh, interaction energy as a function of azimuthal angle and intermolecular distance. Now, when you look at this azimuthal angle 30 degrees, so that is basically this part here, then you can see that the, the potential energy diagram. So, like uh, please also note that yellow color or red color is corresponding to low energy and uh, light blue color or more like dark blue color is basically representing a high energy. So, whenever energy is negative, that is basically meaning that th that is a kind of stable dimer. Yeah? Because the, the zero is actually corresponding to the energy of a single molecule. So, whenever there is a dimer form, then you would basically compare the energy with respect to an, a monomer and say how much the energy is stabilized. So, therefore, negative is actually meaning that it is more stable. But now, what you see is basically along the 30 degree, you find that there are several minimas. That would mean that at around 30 degree, you would find that there are several minimas available. So, this is basically at theta is equal to 30 degree. Right. That is the interesting part. Yeah? So, that means depending on the orientation of the molecule, you can actually have not just one minima. So, at 0 degree, you clearly see that there is only one minima. But at uh, 30 degree, you clearly see that there is one minima here and another minima here. So, that means there are two possible orientations which are actually stable. Yeah? Uh, that is uh, quite interesting about the molecule and now you can understand clearly what would happen for the molecular energy or the molecular so called interaction energy as a function of azimuthal orientation and intermolecular distance. Now, you see clearly that this is the picture that you have to consider in finally understanding the complete molecular molecule interaction. Yeah, because there are two independent parameters, the orientation and the distance, because you also see that when the molecule comes to this 30 degree orientation, you see the intermolecular distance is basically decreased to something like 13.49. Yeah? So, that actually corresponds to this point here and which is actually meaning that when you change the orientation, they are not only just changing the orientation, they are also coming closer or going away and so on. Yeah? So, therefore, this picture clearly tell me or clearly tells us what is the dependence of the molecular orientation and the intermolecular interaction. Of course, if I would like to look at it and then basically you can see that this correspond to this particular point and this one is actually corresponding to this particular point. Yeah? So, these are two possible ways. So, that actually means when you have molecules on the surface, you can in fact form several possible uh, type of assembly on the surface and therefore, it is also quite important that you understand them in this kind of um, detailed analysis to, to clearly understand. Well, uh, depending on the shape and uh, the geometry of the molecule, you can always end up in a much more complex diagrams. It is 
may not be necessary that you can just define everything in two coordinates. You may also require more than two coordinates to define basically the intermolecular uh, interaction. Yeah? But in this case, uh, it is good enough that we can basically understand. Um, you will also see in the later slides that uh, the, the, the molecular pattern itself on the surface is basically uh, uh, the one at 30 degrees. And you can actually see like when you cover the surface with one monolayer, you clearly see the pattern that is corresponding to an azimuthal angle of 30 degree. Yeah? So that is because it is actually an energy minimum, but you need to have a lot of molecule in order to, to push the molecule into that so called global minima or to uh, one of the minima because there are many minima as available on the, on the potential energy surface. Good. Now, um, uh, comes to the molecule surface interaction. When it comes to the molecule surface interaction, um, it is again not just the fact that uh, you take an atom and you can actually just go on a given adsorption site. Molecules are much bigger. Therefore, you have to also consider something called as a molecular orientation with respect to surface. So, that is something we want to now consider because both the molecule surface and the molecule molecule interaction is finally deciding what happens to the molecular assembly or what controls the molecular assembly itself. Now, let us take this very simple example of benzene on platinum 111 surface. Uh, interesting thing what I want to show here is like using the um, microscopy and also using calculation. What people found when you deposit this molecule benzene on, on, on platinum 111 surface, they find three different type of contrast for the um, molecule itself, for the benzene molecule itself. So, one where you just, uh, it, uh, the molecule appear like a bright protrusion and in the other case, the molecule appear like uh, uh, something with three protrusions and in the other case, uh, it is more or less looking like um, a benzene ring, like you would expect. Yeah? And in the other case, it is just looking like a big protrusion. So, then people were asking what is actually behind this or why do we see actually more contrast for one type of molecule. Yeah? You would have expected to see something like a benzene, a hexagon, but in, uh, on the other hand, you would basically observe different type of contrast. And by the way, in the next upcoming lectures, we will be looking in greater details about the scanning tunneling microscopy itself. There you will understand that in scanning tunneling microscopy, what we measure is nothing but just the electron density um, uh, that is actually spread over the molecule near the uh, frontier orbitals. Yeah? So, therefore, what you are also seeing to do something with not just the geometry of the molecule, it also has to do something with the electron density that is distributed around the molecule near the frontier orbitals. Yeah? So, we will look into that in greater detail, but just believe me right now, what we see experimentally is this three type of contrast. Now, then people have actually also done some theoretical calculation and they could reproduce exactly the contrast as you observe in the experiment only when they have actually considered that the molecule can adsorb on the surface at different type of sites. One is known as the top site, we have already heard about that. Another one is actually known as the bridge site, yeah. This is the top site, bridge site and then you also have something known as the HCP or uh, FCC hollow site, yeah. You can now see when you look at the molecule, you cannot accommodate the molecule on a given uh, um, surface site. That is the, the, the key element here, unlike in the case of atomic adsorbates. Here, you are going to accommodate them on a larger area. So, therefore, there are going to be multiple sites the molecule is going to occupy. Yeah? So, therefore, you can see clearly, if you are putting the molecule in the HCP site, somehow alternate carbon atoms, as you see here, alternate carbon atoms are coming on the uh, top, near to the top side and the other alternate atoms, um, here I am marking it with green, the other alternate atoms are actually coming to the so called bridge site. Yeah? That means, the molecular contrast is at the end enhancing and appearing it as more or less like a uh, three uh, small mod, uh, three small lobes. Yeah? So, that actually also makes sense at the end. Then in the case of um, 
Brit site, the, the molecule is basically having a, a, a much more complex um, adsorption geometry um, um, that, that is actually giving rise to a, a contrast which is just looking like a bright protrusion. And in the case of um, molecule adsorbing at the uh, near the top side, where you can see each of the atoms are actually having a similar adsorption site. And therefore, they are all somewhat appearing in the STM contrast and then giving rise to something like a nice hexagonal um, ring kind of um, a pattern. Yeah, so that is the interesting thing. So now what we want to, to see here is that when you talk about molecular adsorbate, it is quite important that we also have to consider about the molecular adsorption site on the surface. It is not just a single site where the molecule get occupied, it is actually a much more complex site. So this is about the case of a small molecule, but now look at a little bit bigger molecule like the molecule that we have been talking about. It is a, a, a thylacinin molecule, in this case an iron thylacinin molecule on silver 111 surface. Now when you look at the molecule in a very, very low concentration, so what you are seeing here is a single molecule in STM contrast. So this is again scanning tunneling micrograph where you can clearly see isolated molecule. It is all controlled by the coverage, so you have a very, very low coverage, so you can see the isolated molecule. And when you inspect all the isolated molecule, what you find clearly is that most of the of all the molecules are oriented just along three different directions. As you can see already here, two molecules are actually orienting like this, another molecule is ori also orienting like that, even this molecule at the corner is orienting like this. Then you find another orientation where the molecule is oriented like that. But if you inspect the relative orientation between one of the molecular axis, I am calling this to be the molecular axis, one of the molecular axis and with respect to that of other molecule, then you would find they are all rotated by 120 degree each other. Well, it makes sense because the symmetry of the surface is again a threefold symmetry, therefore, uh, sorry, sixfold symmetry, therefore you would expect that the angle between the orientation of the molecule should also be just uh, 120 degree. Well, that actually makes sense. Now you can see this is actually kind of a theoretical calculation again, not uh, experimental determination is not really possible like this way. Uh, to some extent, yes, but not really. So this is an, a theoretical calculation. So where they have, of course, uh, checked how the molecule is orienting with respect to the surface and they found that again each atoms on the molecule as you can see here is having a variety of adsorption sites. So none of the atoms are just looking the, the same as the other. So they have a variety of adsorption. So therefore it is now important to define something like an adsorption geometry rather than an adsorption site. Yeah, That adsorption geometry includes basically the relative orientation of the molecule with respect to the molecular axis with respect to the surface lattice. Yeah? So here as you can see, one of the molecular axis as you see here is oriented along one of the uh, lattice directions. So this is basically one of the lattice directions. So these are the three different lattice direction and now you can see one of the molecular axis is in fact aligned with respect to that of the uh, with, with respect to the surface lattice. And this makes sense at the end because now the molecule will be able to somewhat adsorb in a, in a better position. So now the only identity that I can just use is where the center atom is basically placed. Yeah? Everything else is much more um, undefinable, uh, but uh, uh, however, if you do calculations, you can clearly see how molecules are adsorbing. So at the end of the day, what I want to say is that the adsorption geometry of the molecule is something that we need to now talk about. Yeah? Now, of course, this is kind of an optimum geometry, but you would also find if you try to turn the molecule around the, the surface, you would also find that there are other possible energies or other possible stable energies for the molecule. So therefore, now if you again revisit uh, to the to the so-called molecule surface interaction. Originally, we were just telling that it would also look somewhat similar like a periodic, uh, la, uh, periodic um, uh, pattern where this is the energy and uh, th this would basically correspond to the uh, position where the molecules are, are, are adsorbed. 
but we clearly know that this is not the picture because this is only possible if an atom is basically adsorbing on the surface. But now since the molecule itself is so large and it has to basically just uh, adsorb uh, on, on many variety of, uh, or, uh, variety of adsorption sites on the surface, therefore it is better to define something like a molecular orientation or adsorption geometry and depending on different adsorption geometry, you may actually have not just one minima, you also will have several minimas basically. So that means if you would just gently shift the molecule and move the center atom, let us say to the top side, you will also find another minima. Or if you would move the, the center atom to the bridge side, you will also find another minima. Yeah? So that would basically means for again the, the molecule surface interaction, it will never ever look like just as smooth as uh, this one, it is going to also look much more rough pattern than the you would observe it for the for the atomic adsorbent again but there is a, a natural periodicity of of course observed yeah that actually comes due to the fact that there is a minimum distance up to which the molecule can come closer yeah so therefore there is definitely a periodicity because at the end of the day you will find that molecules are arranging with a certain periodicity however there are many, many possible minima. So, these are all minimas at which the molecule can get adsorbed on the surface. But there will be something, something like again a global minima, a global minimum and this is where the molecule is finally going to adsorb if you push it using uh, additional parameters like temperature, concentration and things like that, you can then definitely push to the final structure. But it is not necessary that the molecule will always go there it may also get trapped in some of these uh, little minimas uh, or local minimas that are available on the uh, on the surface yeah so that is uh, clearly the 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 point that i want to mention so therefore finally if you want to take a picture together it is going to be the molecule molecule orientation and the molecule um, um, uh, surface uh, um, orientation and uh, is going to define basically the um, uh, basically the adsorption energy of the uh, molecule on the surface and that is basically going to define what is the pattern that you are going to finally achieve on the on the surface um, uh, well with this i would uh, like to conclude uh, this lecture and in the next lecture we will basically uh, uh, see a, a bit further um, aspects of the uh, of the molecule lar adsorbates on surface um, and, 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 and so on. And, uh, and a few more examples from uh, molecular adsorbates formed in, in, in solid liquid interface is also something we are going to discuss in the uh, next class. Yeah? Thank you very much.